Hey everybody, my name is Jared Tate, the founder of the Digibyte Blockchain, and today is Saturday, April 13th, 2024, and I am coming to you with a Digibyte development update. If you're new to Digibyte, first of all, welcome to the community. If you want to know more about Digibyte, the first thing I recommend you do is go to digibyte.org. In summary, Digibyte is a 10-year-old, truly decentralized, independent blockchain, so it's not a layer two. We have our own chain, we have an amazing community, and Digibyte itself is roughly 40 times faster than Bitcoin with five independent mining algorithms. We've made a ton of innovation over the last 10 years, um, including real-time difficulty adjustment and much, much more. So if you want to learn more, the first thing I, I recommend you do is go to digibyte.org. So finally, I am coming to everybody in the Digibyte community with a video to recommend the release of the final version 8.22 release. This has been a long time in the making. We've been through a lot. There's been a lot of changes, but we're finally here. So throughout the rest of this video, I'm going to try and keep it quick, but I'm going to recommend or propose what I think the best path forward is. Uh, that doesn't mean we have to do this or, or the way I'm describing it. But I think you might come to the same conclusion if you listen to some of the proposals here. So what am I recommending we do? Well, first of all, there's been hundreds of thousands of lines of code that have been changed in 8.22. You know, even with Bitcoin from version uh, 1.6 and 1.7 to version 2.2, there was almost a complete rewrite of a lot of the protocol. A lot of that was just modernizing it to the latest C++ language standards. But there was also a lot of bug fixes, a lot of improvements, and that's all stuff we benefited from. But that's a huge part of the reason why this has taken us so long. Along with the way that we've completely revamped the way we develop Digibyte to make it more decentralized. So no one single person is involved in this. There's multiple reviewers. There's multiple people. Uh, the GitHub account itself is an organization. So it's, it's really streamlined and improved the decentralization of Digibyte for the long term. So that's been a huge part of version 8.22 development uh, process that I don't think is very much appreciated. Um, so what am I recommending we do here? Well, I recommend we get version 8.22 out, finally. And I recommend we do that with two things that if you've watched some of my re recent videos that uh, I've been talking about. The first thing I recommend we do is we delay the Taproot upgrade. Now, there's a lot of concern in the community. I've talked to many people over this past couple weeks, and a lot of people aren't so sure about Taproot because they see what's happening with Bitcoin and ordinals and how some of the bigger exchanges like Binance are actually delisting ordinals. Uh, you know, there's a lot of arguments and concerns. People are worried about spam. I, those are very valid concerns. And so with that, I believe eight, version 8.22, because there's so much that has changed, should be released without any contention or any worries. And we should release a stable version, which I believe we're absolutely there, a stable version that doesn't have any uh, controversy or worries about. So I believe we're there. And if you, you know, we, we can always continue it. It's there. We can activate it later. And I believe we should. And the reason I believe we should eventually activate it after we get the, the this final version 8.22 release out is there's so many benefits in the Taproot upgrade. And for those that missed any of my previous videos, the Taproot upgrade consists of three things. You have TapScript, which is a new TapScript language for controlling the outputs. You have the Taproot code that controls TapScript and then also controls the other part, which is the addition of Schnorr signatures. Now, Schnorr signatures are a cryptographic innovation that can reduce the transaction size for Digibyte by 50%. So in a way, those of you that are worried about spam you actually get less spam with Schnorr signatures and Taproot. So it's kind of a funny situation. But anyway, for the time being, I recommend that we move forward with just delaying Taproot and not going ahead with it just yet. So what do you think about that? What, what does the community think? I believe that will allow us to get it out here fairly quickly, you know, in the uh, probably the next week or two. But the other big thing that I think we should go ahead and... Uh, well, actually, before I get into Dandelion, I also want to send a huge thanks 
uh, to Jan because he actually spent this week while I was focusing on dandelion going ahead and fixing a bunch of bugs uh, to be on par with version BTC version 22.1. So this actually, we just approved this this morning. There's a bunch of bug fixes in here. So big thanks to him. Uh, you should go to his uh, GitHub and Twitter account, and I believe he's posted an address. You should help support him. He's been a big help this past uh, few months. So a uh, huge shout out to him. So that's uh, the other thing that we did this week. So with that, the other thing I think we should do before we get 8.22 out is we should disable dandelion for the time being. Now, I've spent the last week, week and a half going through the dandelion code, trying to troubleshoot it, diagnose what's going on. I actually opened up this GitHub issue describing it. Basically, the way dandelion works is if your node or your computer, your Digibuy wallet, sends out a transaction... That transaction then enters the something, or is supposed to enter something known as the stem pool. So the stem pool is basically only visible from one computer that relays it to another computer. So just like the stem in a dandelion, it'll take anywhere from one to, you know, possibly 30, 40, 50 hops before it blossoms to the rest of the network. Now, a traditional transaction, when it's broadcast, it just gets broadcast to all the nodes on the network that are listening right away. Now, the danger of that is anybody that has a listening node could map your specific wallet address with your IP in your physical location. And there's been cases with Bitcoin where people have actually been tracked down with large Bitcoin wallets because people saw they were broadcasting from a node with a large amount of BTC. So that was the original idea behind Dandelion is, hey, let's anonymize the origination IP of a transaction to help protect the end user. And I think that's a great use case. Now, the problem with this is that's not working. And the reason it's not working is because there was so much code that was rewritten in the Bitcoin Core Protocol and Digibyte from versions, uh, you know, uh, version seven to version basically eight here and, and version uh, 16 and 17 to version 2.2 and BTC, that the reference impl implementation, which was done by a team of PhD researchers at a university, has not been updated. And in fact, when the Bitcoin developers attempted to integrate dandelion into bitcoin it was so complex they eventually abandoned the idea they didn't abandon it because they didn't like the idea it was just very complicated so after spending a week attempting to rewrite parts of it myself i can tell you i will need a lot more time if that's to be done and i think eventually we could get that but it's not something that can be done easily so in the interest of time and resources, that's another reason why I recommend we disable Dandelion with the final 8.22 release. Now, that doesn't mean it's gone forever. We can go back to it and we can eventually fix it when we have more times and resources. It, it literally only takes one line of code to disable it. Now, the other reason I'm recommending we go ahead and disable it for the time being is there's a lot of talk of the potential that Digibyte could be considered a privacy coin in certain jurisdictions. I've actually talked to several people in the community that are very concerned about this, especially those in Europe and in other places. And let's be honest, there's a lot of privacy coins that have been delisted everywhere. So that is a very, you know, just because I don't see it as a total privacy coin feature or protocol doesn't mean some regulators or some risk uh, assessment team at an exchange might consider it a privacy coin. So in the interest, once again, of like, let's release something where there's not controversy, there's not division, uh, let's just disable it from the time being. That's my recommendation. What do you think? Now, the next part of this is, in exchange for disabling Dandelion, I believe it's good that we get more Tor Digibyte nodes up and running. Now, Tor's a feature that's been possible with Bic or, uh, Digibyte for years. Actually, I believe almost since the very beginning. Uh, it's something that we've never really tried to rally momentum or a call to action around to get more Digibyte Tor nodes up. But it's very much possible and relatively straightforward to set up Digibyte with the Tor um, network. Now, those of you that are not familiar with Tor, Tor is a way, uh, it's basically was originally developed by uh, the U.S. Navy to create uh, the most private form of communications and net browsing that you could get on the internet. It was designed to be used, there's a Tor browser 
Um, it's a separate protocol, but it was designed for privacy, especially for those in parts of the world where the leaders and dictators and regimes will kill you if they don't like what you're doing on the internet. So that's how it was originally developed. So with that, it's actually a much better privacy shield for Digibyte than Dandelion ever would be. And it's easier to implement. So in exchange for disabling Dandelion because of the D delisting risks, the complexity of the code, the amount of time it would take to get it working, and the fact we have a better solution that is already there that we just have to, to, to get a few members of the community to start deploying nodes. Let's do that. And let's simplify our lives and let's get version 8.22 out. So with that, I'd like to put out a call to action to everybody out there. Hey, let's get some uh, Digibyte full-time Tor nodes up and running. You know, you can make your... your um, your Digibyte Tor node, uh, there's a couple of configuration steps. You can actually, there's a document within the Digibyte core repository on GitHub that explains how to do this. Now, one of the key things is you can configure your node either to only talk to Tor nodes or you can configure it to talk to Tor and non-Tor nodes. Now, if you do that, there's still a risk your Tor node might be de-anonymized. However, we need some, some Tor nodes up there to seed the Tor node network effectively, uh, which ties back into the main Digibyte blockchain. So I'm working on uh, setting my own up this weekend. I know some other people are. I believe we may need to make a few tweaks and maybe some seed changes with a pull request here before final version 8.22 just to kind of bump and modify Tor. But it can absolutely be done. So, and I believe that's a better long-term solution because you have just literally thousands of people that contribute to the Tor project, and all they focus on is privacy and anonymity and anonymity online. So, I think that's the uh, the, the best uh, path forward. Uh, yeah, Digibyte stats. So, let's go take a look at the the network currently. If you didn't catch in this last uh, week and a half. The Digibyte blockchain surpassed 19 million blocks in our blockchain, making us the longest, oldest UTXO blockchain in the world today. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. It's proof that 15-second blocks and fast, efficient, secure multi-algo mining does work. I mean, Digibyte's over 10 years old now, you know. Uh, over 46 million transactions, just about 30 gigs on disk. The current block rewards, 351 digibyte. Um, I need to update some of this. This is a site that I've been working on. I haven't launched it yet. I want to eventually get to that. I want to send out a huge thank you to about the 80 people who have downloaded uh, RC4 over the last week and a half to help us test it. So far, there's been no issues, no problems. It seems to be very stable. Another reason why I think we're absolutely ready for the final version 8.22 release. Uh, breakdown in the last 63 blocks. Now, to get a real good snapshot of this, this is the five independent uh, Digibyte mining algorithms. It's only been 64 blocks, so as you can see here, Scripts got about 26 of them, 26%. Every every algorithm should get about 20% of the blocks, and that pretty much becomes the case after about 500 blocks that you look at. But you will see this kind of rolling fluctuation where for a few minutes you might see one of more one of more algorithm than the other. But then as uh, DigiShield kicks in, which is the real-time difficulty adjustment, you can see the different five algorithms. Uh, they change in real time. So that's what's kind of what's going on. So you might get, like in that case, you know, three or four script blocks in a row. And then at that point, as you can see here, the script difficulty spikes because obviously we don't want more script blocks. We want less. And so that's the advantage of real-time difficulty adjustment. And for those that don't know, it takes Bitcoin two weeks to do a single difficulty adjustment, whereas Digibyte's doing it every 15 seconds. So that's uh, it's pretty amazing, pretty awesome stuff. So to conclude, um, you know, I, I had several conversations with uh, some, some good friends and long-term supporters of Digibyte and people in the community this week, and it really started getting me to think and reflect on the last 10 years, you know, or 10 and a half years, I guess, at this point. And they're like, you know, we, hey, we've noticed a change. You seem happier. You seem more motivated. And I'm like, I am. I'm working on the Digibyte Core Protocol. It's something I'm passionate about. I mean, I started the thing working on it in 2013, and here I am, you know, almost 11 years later for a reason. But I was thinking, you know, over the last 
10 years, there's only been a handful, maybe two or three times where all I did was just work on Digibyte full time. And at most, you know, in the beginning, I think I worked around the clock for four months. But once it kind of took off and I started meeting with people, trying to create companies, starting to do conferences, starting to speak, starting to go around, trying to build use cases, I ended up spending most of my time, I feel like, just chasing the wind. You know, I think I've sat down with almost every major bank or tech company in the world at some point, uh, you know, explaining things because it was hard in 2014, 2015, 2016. Because you had to just explain what a blockchain was. Whereas now, most people know it's much easier. So, But I wonder if I had just been able to focus on building and coding full-time for a year, two years, you know, what we could have achieved and what could have happened. Um, and with that, you know, as you know, I've been trying to raise money to work full-time on Digibyte. I've taken some other part-time work. But I have come to basically a place where I can continue, you know, putting in at least 20 or 30 hours a week just on Digibyte. Hopefully for the next, you know, three, four, five, six months and hopefully a year. Um, you know, because I believe that there's so much potential for Digibyte and blockchain in general. You know, we're, we're still in the very beginning of this. There's so many use cases from security applications, you know, with IoT, password management, you know, securing online documents, photos, um, to, you know, potential for digi assets. There's so many use cases that haven't even been untouched by this industry because everybody's been so focused on pump and dumps. Um, you know, and, and I've tried, you know, to build some of these use cases over the years, but, you know, I ran into various issues and obstacles, but that's just part of building something new, right? But with that, I am going to continue, you know, working as much as I can, hopefully 20 to 30 hours a week. Like I said, I do have some other part-time work. Um, but I really believe that if we focus on building what matters, making the core protocol as secure, as powerful, and as fast and as efficient as we can, and getting the secondary layer infrastructure, you know, block explorers, wallets, existing stuff updated as well, and we continue to build a solid, reliable, trustworthy blockchain that's truly decentralized with no centralized company or mass pre-mine, Digibyte will stand the test of time. And as I've said for a decade now, you know, we're going to be here for the long run. So I'm very much looking forward to the day, you know, I get to do an interview or a talk in 2035 when the last Digibyte's minted and we go into, you know, the next phase of things. But anyway, with that... I want to thank everybody in the community who has already supported to, to help me. And, and I want to continue people to, to encourage people to support other developers. But with that, if you want to help fund me part-time, there's my Digibyte address. You can PayPal or Zell me at Jared at Jaredate.com. Please don't send any more spear phishing emails. I don't know if any of you saw my tweet last night. But on a daily basis, because I'm posting my email address, I am getting spear phishing attacks now that is basically... Uh, probably increased fivefold. So thank you to all those out there trying to infect my email address with malware, but I'm not stupid enough to uh, uh, click on it and I'm reporting all your emails. But um, anyway, I can't thank you enough. I'm going to continue doing these these video updates on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, you know, hopefully at least anywhere from two to four a month. But we've got a lot of work to do. So I encourage you to support the other developers up there. And as we've all said for years, you don't need anybody's permission to build on Digibyte. Anybody can use the blockchain. Anybody can build on the blockchain. And anybody can contribute. Our GitHub organization, anybody can start commenting. Anybody can start helping to review or add their input. And the more you do, the more I encourage other members of the community to help you know, reward that. And I believe if we create a culture of incentivizing development use cases uh, and in a culture of positivity, which I've really been trying my, you know, my, myself to do. Uh, I think Digibyte's going to go a lot of places, and 2024 is going to continue to be a great year uh, into the end of the year. So, with that, I want to keep this short. I want to thank everybody again, and uh, until next time, stay decentralized.